Hey everyone, how's it going? It is me, Noor. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you and your loved ones are staying safe, especially if you are located in Europe, Eastern Europe area. Um, but yeah, today I just wanted to do my February wrap up and talk a little bit about the books that I read in this past month. So yeah, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Um, the first book I read in February was this one, Confessions of a Mask by Yukio Mishima. And I read this during a reading vlog, so I'll leave that linked around. But ultimately, I ended up giving this book four stars. I got a lot out of this. So this essentially follows the story of a young boy, Ko-chan, coming to terms with his sexuality in pre-war, during the war Japan and just trying to figure out queerness without having any point of reference or without having the language for it. Of course, like one of the few times that he was allowed to gaze at images of bodies and especially male bodies for an extended period of time was in biblical depictions of art, which are typically very gruesome. So he developed these kind of strange afflictions uh, and attractions. So yeah, it's him grappling with that and then eventually growing up and trying to negotiate this person that he thinks he's supposed to be um, and trying to fit that mold of like a straight man with a wife and following down that path and this internal desire that he has and trying to see who he is between all of that. The writing is of course beautiful, it's very heavy, it's a dense read for sure so it took me a while to get through but I'm really grateful for having read it. I think that it's always nice to push yourself a little bit in terms of comfort zone in reading and writing styles and stuff like that. So yeah, grateful to have read it. Four stars and interesting. A lot to think about with this one. So after that book, there was quite a lot to chew on with that. I wanted something light, fluffy, basically like aloe vera for the sunburn of your brain um, and I read The Charm Offensive by Alison Cochran. So this book is essentially like a reality TV show setting book. Um, I forget what the name is but the show that the characters are on or one of them, Dave, is a producer on this show and I forget the main guy's name, Charlie. Charlie is like the main, the bachelor basically. He's chosen to be the guy that all these people date. Um, and he was an unlikely pick because he's a tech millionaire, tech whiz, um, and, <laughs> and he was chosen to be this. And he's like very awkward, not typically like the smooth type of lead that you would find. And Dave is essentially assigned to be his, um, to be his coach, to coach him through his particular producer. And so, you know, eventually they fall in love, whatever. That's what the premise is. But I gave this book four stars. I really enjoyed it. I thought this was a fun read. The characters are well-developed. I really enjoyed Charlie trying to come to terms with his own sexuality without it being like a crisis. Him um, trying to navigate dating amidst his neurodivergence I thought was really interesting as well. It's just a fun time. It's a good time. Dave's a cutie. Love that. They travel a lot. I love reality TV. I think I've mentioned this like every video. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Obviously, you're not looking to read anything like this too critically. There's a lot of, you know, uh, at some points it feels like a bingo card of identity name drops and like representation that's a little bit hollow but whatever it's a good time it's a fun time it's a smooth brain read so whatever i'm not i don't think anyone is looking to get their political or socio-political education from the charm offensive by ls cochran right uh, and if you are might i recommend something else yeah, after that, I listened to Passing by Nella Larson on audiobook, and this was a 4.5 star read for me. It's really interesting. I really want to watch the movie with um, Tessa Thompson, I think, plays one of the characters, and 
forgetting the other person's name, but Rebecca Hall is the director. So this novel essentially follows two characters, Irene, who is our protagonist, who we get the perspective of, and Claire, a childhood friend of hers who basically disappeared off the map. And this discusses them navigating society as white passing. So um, Cl yeah, Claire has begun living her life as a white woman after disappearing. No one in her immediate surroundings, including her very racist husband, knows that she's black. She just lives her life out as a white woman. And Irene is black. She has a black husband and black kids and lives her life as a black woman, but on occasion is able to pass and does pass as white. Um, for instance, like when she meets Irene's husband, he doesn't know that she's a black woman. So it really just talks about like the concept of race and how race is so socially constructed and how it's defined by the situations. It talks about what you lose in terms of passing and what there is to gain. Um, that's sort of the point of contention between the two characters is Claire saying, you know, you could have this life, you could have all of this, um, like you have more access to affluence. Whereas Irene's like, but you are constantly living in fear of the other shoe dropping and you're not living an honest truth or whole truth. Um, so it's that plus very sapphic undertones and intense female friendship, which we love to see. Yeah, very fascinating, a really quick read with a lot to it, a lot to think about in terms of race and again, beautifully written. Um, listening to this on audio was also fun because it has like that 1920s cadence and way of talking, which I find so pleasing. Um, so that was that. And the next book I read was this one, The Lost Daughter by Elena Ferrante, a slim little novel that again was adapted into a movie. This one by Maggie Gyllenhaal as the director with Olivia Coleman, who is on my cover and the Dakota Johnson icon, legend, moment, diva, extraordinaire. Um, so I'm really looking forward to watching that movie and that was a big reason I, I started reading this book. Um, and I also just enjoy Ferrante's writing, but yeah, I want to make a book to movie comparison, what happens in the adaptation type of video. So keep your eyes out for that, but um, also, Jaren from Jaren Reads and Rambles, I think her channel is, um, did a vlog talking about this book and the movie, so I'll link that, and I love her channel, um, she's so smart. But yes, this book I gave, this book I gave 4.5 stars to, I really enjoyed this, I really enjoyed Ferrante's writing, of course, just the way that she creates such a strong sense of mood that's like humid, that sticky summer feeling she captures so well. Um, this book talks a lot about motherhood. For those of you who don't know, the premise of this book is essentially the main character, Leda, goes on vacation to the seaside town um, and she, you know, lives alone in Italy. Her daughters live with her husband in Canada, I believe. So she's separated from them. But when she's at the beach, she sees this family from Naples. What is the adjective form of people from Naples? I don't know. Um, she sees this family and immediately is drawn to the young mother and her daughter and the kind of relationship they have. And she forms this sort of obsession with this family and their family dynamics and also kind of this derision towards them for being loud and for being boisterous, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the little girl that she's been watching loses a doll that she has and all hell breaks loose. Basically, we find out, and I don't think this is a spoiler, it's quite early on, we find out that Leda, the main character, has taken the doll. This book is really just a meditation on motherhood. It's about the distance and the tension between this idea of the good mother, the platonic ideal of a mother, and then the actualities of mothering, how no one is ever going to reach that standard of the good mother, like that doesn't exist, right? Um, and reflections led at the main character and her own relationship with 
being mothered and how that shaped the way she ended up mothering her kids. I think this also talks about how very quickly young girls form an association with this idea of mothering and being mothered and start developing their own conceptions around it, particularly with the little girl Elena in this book and her doll and that relationship. Uh, yeah, very interesting, beautiful writing. I dog-eared a bunch of passages, highlighted a bunch of things, but I will get more specific in that movie book comparison video that I promised. You'll see it soon. Next, I read another romance, a little good time, good time read. Uh, I read Red, White, and Royal Blue, and yeah, this was fun. It basically follows Alex, who is the first female president of the US's son, the first son basically, and his nemesis that he's always been compared to by media, Prince Henry of England, who is a prince, obviously, um, and how they're basically forced to put on a facade of being friends for public relations, international relations, what have you. And of course, they hate each other, but then as they get to know each other, do they actually hate each other or is it just pent up sexual tension? Who knows? Um, yeah, very that, very four stars, I think, or no, 3.5 stars smooth brain read uh good time i think the middle of the book sagged a little bit it was very just like oh i'm gonna go see you in paris okay i'm gonna go see you in another country that i can't think of off the top of my head germany whatever um yeah a lot of the same and then the ending is interesting of course because it is set in like the white house and also the royal family very weird opinions about politics. Again, also another one of those um, books that has a sort of like bingo chart of representation. Um, yeah, there's a federal agent that is like, I think a trans woman and it's like touted as like, she's such a girl boss, she commits war crimes. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, all of that aside, cute nice relationship they fall in love and i like that i like love uh yeah and then the final read i think the only five star read of this month was into the wild by john krakauer i had heard a lot about krakauer from anna wallace johnson i love her channel she is amazing she's wonderful she's a diva um and i'd heard a lot about krakauer from her yeah, so I picked this up because of her recommendation and I loved it. This basically tells the story of Chris McCandless, a young 20-something boy who, upon graduating from college, decides to renounce the world as we know it in terms of money and all of that and lives a vagabond life. He takes his car and just starts driving around the US and this specifically tells the story of how he died when he decided to go on an expedition into the wild of Alaska and tried to live within that habitat. Of course, it's a very um, inhospitable environment. It's not necessarily the easiest place to survive and you know, communities that have lived there have intense knowledge of the land. Um, and so it basically talks about how he went into the wild and then was found dead in an abandoned bus um, he had basically cut off all ties with his family, with his loved ones, and Krakauer is recounting how he got to that point, what were his different adventures, and within that, trying to understand the urges that led um, Chris into the wild and led him on this journey. There were quite a few other people that have had the same impulse of basically like, going into the wild and trying to live off of the land and he tells those stories as well. Um, I really enjoyed the personal anecdote of Krakauer's career as a mountaineer and how he decided to climb, I think the Denali, no, the big, it's called the, the Thumb, the Big Thumb, something like that, a mountain in Alaska as a part of the Denali mountain range. 
um, at a very young age with maybe not the most amount of preparation. So he draws parallels between his experience, what he felt at that time, and yeah, what happened eventually to Chris McCandless. I think it's a beautiful story about the different people that he's met, Chris, I mean, has met along his way, the kind of character that he was, the kind of person that he was, and how, you know, it's really easy to discount him as being young or foolish or unprepared, which in some sense, yes, he was, but then also that's, a, that's very reductive. I mean, he would have survived if circumstances were different. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this. I think listening to this on audio is very similar and I would recommend this to people that are interested in maybe like true crime. It has that same dark atmosphere, that same sense of tension because you know at the beginning what happens, like in terms of him dying and how he died. But as you unravel the different stories, you try to understand like what brought him to that point. So in terms of narrative structure, I think it's very similar. And yeah, I've been talking for a long time. I'm out of breath. And this candle, I'm sitting so close to it, is kind of suffocating me. I really like this book, five star. I think this is a book or a genre or subject that I'm interested in reading more about, like survival, living in the wild, basically books to read if you are a survivor fan. An alarm went off on my phone and cut me off, but as I was saying, those are all the books I read in February. I hope you found this interesting, and if you've read any of these books, I would love to know your thoughts. Um, if you have any recommendations for similar books, specifically books similar to Krakauer, I would be really interested to read more of that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all the things that you can do on YouTube, and I will see you again very soon. I say that every time, but maybe this time I'll stick to it. <laughs> okay, bye.